So there's this attachment that you can put onto SLR, it's called a lens baby, and this is basically it. And if I just take off the back, you'll see that this attaches onto an SLR. And what it is, it's basically like a tilt shift lens, if anyone's used it. You can basically pull it down and tilt the the lens and what it does is it, it blurs the size of images. I'm not going to go into it, the, the point because it's not a real lens it doesn't have an aperture function so at the moment it's got a very very wide aperture, there's a lot of light getting in so what it comes with are these aperture rings and what you do is you, you take one of these you pop it inside, it's all uh, magnetic and it sits in there and that limits the amount of light that's coming in and out so that you can control the light in your image but I just wanted to show you these as examples of um, aperture rings really so there's the four sizes there you've got the 2.8, 4, 5.6 and 8 so you can see that the higher the number the smaller the hole that lets the light through so if you imagine 8 is a squint if you compare it to your eyes and 2.8 is a very wide eye so there's a lot of light getting in if you do the same thing with your eyes open your eyes very wide there's a lot of light coming in squint your eyes there's less light coming in and that affects your focus as well um, open your eyes really wide there's a lot of light but it's also difficult to focus on one thing squint there's less light and you can focus on things a lot easier so that's an example of what aperture rings would look like. They're usually blades and the blades sort of move around to make the hole bigger or smaller but the theory is the same. It's these different size holes controlling the amount of light. Okay, so I've got a bit of a setup here. I've got two cameras and then some objects distanced away from each other. Now we've got the SX40 here on the left and on the right I've got a Canon 400D. Now these are just to show an example and what I've done is I've pointed them both so that they're focusing on that little acrobat thing there. So if we just go behind the cameras if you look at the SX40 so you can see we've got a thirtieth of a second in the shutter speed, 3.5 in the aperture and a 200 ISO. If we look at the 400D We've got the same thing, 30 of a second, 3.5 f-stop and 200 ISO. However, when we take these pictures of the objects behind, the SLR is going to have a lot more background blur. So that Christmas card in the background is going to be very blurry, whereas the SX40, the way that the lens is built, isn't going to quite work the same way. Now remember the aperture rings I showed you. The wider the aperture, the more blurry the background. A 3.5 aperture is quite wide, so we'll get a very good background blur. If I show you those pictures now, you see that on the SLR, on the 400D, the background blur is a lot more pronounced. If we then use a higher aperture so that more stuff is in focus, we'll have a look now. So I've used the same settings for both cameras, uh, an eighth of a second on the shutter speed, F8 on the aperture and I've kept the ISO at 200 so if we look at those pictures you'll see that the depth of field on the SLR is a lot deeper you can see a lot more in focus whereas the SX40 there's not much difference between using an F8 and an F3 aperture so when you're using an SLR the aperture affects the background blur as well as the amount of light whereas on the SX40 because of the way the lens is built it only really changes the amount of light you let in rather than the background blur so this can be quite confusing and people are wondering why they can't get a good background blur on the SX40 this is why it's not using the aperture in the same way that the SLR would